Good evening, everyone, and welcome to BT's Fly Tying Friday. Tonight is going to be tough and easy. In fact, we're going to be doing tough and easy flies for the next several weeks during the holidays when people have to come and go. Tonight is going to be Prince Nymphs. Gretchen is going to do the guide sprints, the one she developed for me when I was a working guide, and it worked really, really well. And I'm going to show you how to bulletproof a standard prints. And we've got some partridge tips tonight. Greetings, we're the Beaties from Boise, Idaho. And uh, in getting started tonight, I think I'll put Gretchen on to her recipe and she can take over from there. Well, uh, what we're gonna be using is a 2X long hook. And I think what we've got a size 10 in there. Yeah. Size 10 and a bead head, black thread. The tail is brown Amtron. The rib is fine. We're gonna use some copper wire. <clears throat> the body is peacock, and we show that we're going to use uh, Touchatron dubbing. However, this fly at a size 10 is a little large for a dub body, so I'm going to go ahead and use peacock, which is what I originally did anyway. The wing is white Antron and brown hackle with a wet style collar. Materials. So we're looking at the materials over here, and as you can see, uh, we've got a really nice peacock. And you know it's really significant to uh, take a good look at your your peacock and make sure that you have nice feathers in it and uh, it's supple. And this is a, a great one. Luckily, I had a a friend whose husband, or her brother, I guess it was, had a lot of peacocks, so we've got plenty of good peacock. Uh, we've got some brown hackle. Set this over here. Copper wire. I just got a little tiny bit, but I think it's enough. We'll make it work. And uh, black thread, of no. course. And then our Antron. This is uh, Lure Flash Antron. This fly, uh, when Al was guiding, it seemed like he never had enough Prince Nymphs. So that was one of the things that I ended up tying a lot for him. He would call me when he got off the river saying, I need more Prince Nymphs. I really, fussing with the biots when you've got to do a bunch of them in a hurry was not a fun thing. So this is what we kind of developed and it works great. In fact, I kind of like it better than the regular Prince Nymph. So we're going to start out. Especially early in the year when the water is a little off in color. Oh, yeah. You can't, it'll, it'll outfish a standard prince. I would say two to one, maybe that's exaggerating a bit. It'll outfish a, a standard prince anyway. <clears throat> okay, if we're going to start out, first of all, by tying on a tail with this Antron. So we'll just get it here and take a little chunk. I'm going to come back here and tie it on about this point. I lost part of it, but I don't think it matters. So we're going to get it tied on just right. The end of the hook shank. And we should probably should get rid of these two that I lost. Now we really want that tail to be about the length of the gap of the hook. So what I do is I tie it on long. I'm gonna just take it down here and oh, guess what? There's the gap. And that's a quick, easy way to measure it. I need to uh, work a little bit on this bead. See if I can. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is tie on copper wire. I like to tie that on back here. That's better. I like to be, have it underneath. Just works a little better. I'm going to fold that over a little bit. And so today I spent some time just playing around with it to see if it really made a difference. And you know what? I, I really can't see that much difference in what I've got here. That by the uh, bend of the hook, 
I tied on by the tip <coughs> and that in the front, I tied on by the butt. So I tend to tie it on by the butt because it's a little stronger. The stem is a little stronger down there. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. Bring it down, tie it on, and we'll just leave it hanging kind of in the breeze here. I think I'll make it. Start with our peacock. That Antron wants to be part of the body. They just know getting around it. Here we go. Okay. Don't forget your rib. Oh, you're right. Thank you. I'm going to counter wrap this ribbing. I'm going to force this wing back. We also had a discussion today, Al and I, about. Um, the size, the length of the wing. And I remember that we tied it about half the length of the body. If you wanted it the full length, you could go ahead and do that like that. And then on the water, if you're getting refusals, then you might decide that, well, that's probably too long. So let's just go about half. And that's really how I like it is like that. That's why it's a guide fly. <laughs> yeah. Like Jared talked about last last week, if it's fast and effective, that's all you care about. That's right. Okay, let's take a few turns of hackle, tie it off. Now we're going to push this back a little bit, and it is done. Gonna do a good whip finish right here. You can tie a lot of those in an hour from the time it took Al to drive from Livingston to Bozeman. I could pretty well make a supply for the next day. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, that, and in a supply for most of the days on the river was two to three dozen at least the bulletproof prints and the truth of the matter is that's not its name it's a more a condition and the way we're going to construct this particular bug is um, to make the peacock body extra strong now, there's a dozen different ways that we've we've done to do this i'm just going to share one with you tonight that seems to work really really well we're going to start though with um just like gretchen did a size six to 20 hook and it's a 2x long why 2x long because when we slip a bead on there it eats up at least one of those x's that we would normally use for fly body so that still gives us the equivalent of a 1x long shank if you will to put on a body i'll be using by its white and brown and yeah they are a pain in the neck to work with but i'll show you a way to make them a little tougher let me this is tinsel i'll just set it here where it's easy to get to my peacock my size tackle, the beads. I already got the beads on the hook. I really hate to take the time to show you how to string up, put a bead on a hook when it, it, there's only one way it's going to go through the hole. You know, it's when you get right down to it. There's Gretchen's fly. Now let me just set it aside for a moment and we'll get out uh, the fly that we're going to tie, which uh, having seen hers, 
this one should should not be any particular surprise. There we go. I want you to notice that um, my wings stick up a little bit. That's on purpose. And on the water, if I want them to lay down flat, I throw a couple of half hitches in front, which pushes them down. But I really, most of the time, like them like this because I cannot tell you the number of times that I would go through a drift and then start to bring the fly up. And of course, that in the, in the current, the wing would come down like that and then you'd pause and it would pop back up. I'm just telling you, it seemed to work. So I cannot tell you whether that's the reason or whether you just moved the fly was the reason, but I keep the wings when I'm doing this particular kind of wing up a little bit so it can pull down and then pop back up in the current. As I said the other night, motion is the thing that attracts it, fish. It surely is, reason. yes. So we're gonna start by just, I'll get a hook here, I'll set this aside. Now there's two really, not really, two real weak points in the standard Prince Nymph. And that's the white bias for the wing or whatever you wanna call that appendage in the front and the peacock body. And uh, we've got a couple of uh, bulletproofing techniques to share with you while I get this thread on the hook. I'll just wrap to the end of the shank real quick. I think you know how to wrap thread, so I'll just pick up the pace to get back there. And I'll just take and pull a couple of those biots up and then prepare to tear them. And I want you to notice that the, if I just tear them straight off, they're not gonna be the same length. The, the near one is a little shorter than the far one. If, in, if you can't see it, I'm explaining to you. So what I do is I kind of pull the whole, see how, as I pull back at an angle there, I'm changing the length of one over the other because of the distance between the two. Well, that may not seem like anything important, but there they are now close together. So that, that means they just come off of the, the stem, if you will, with the, um, with the tips pointed about the same distance. Now, not that that makes any difference, but if you're the, the kind of tire that ties them both on at the same time, that'll help you. I'm not. So I'm going to temporarily just hold one and tie one on. Now, there's several ways to put your biots on. I'm a guy that likes the biots to be flat and, and splayed apart. And I like the, 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 the tail to be about equal to the gap of the hook. Now, let me get it at an angle here so you can, I think you can better see right about there, that they're about the same length and they're splayed apart. And uh, I can see it's just not quite right. So, I'll uh, relax my thread turn just a bit and shorten that, the, the near one, just a tiny bit. There we go. And now I'll just start wrapping forward, binding those to the hook shank. It is prettier than the Antron tail, I have to oh, admit. Oh, it, it's prettier until you uh, have nothing at the end of the line uh, with the end, with one and the other one's working. Now I want you to notice that I'm way forward. Yeah. I've gone forward to what I call the pull point. So I can do this next step. Most people don't ever do that, but I go under the tail and give it just a tiny bit of a lift. That keeps that tail just the way I want that. Good. Okay, now it comes time for the, is um, I'm gonna get a couple of these and put them on now. We're gonna put them on. So I cannot tell you the number of Prince Nymphs that I would buy in the store for clients and the darn things that come apart. They would, they would come apart because you tie the whole fly and then you, then you tie, the, tie them on like this and they're held with three or four turns of thread or whatever. I gotta cut these apart right here. And now I want you to notice that those tips are pointed down. 
and that the tips are down on the tail as well. And I want them to be that way, but I'm gonna tie these on pointing forward as if I were tying on a hair wing to a hair wing fly. So I am going to have them pointing up because I'm gonna flip them over later. Now you notice how I've got those V down like that? If I put them on like that, they're gonna be way too wide. So I am going to bring that in quite a bit. See how that is now? And I'm gonna measure it for length and I want that to be about the length of the shank, give or take. And I'll get right in here and tie that on slightly to my side of the hook. There, now they're just the way I want them. And I'll just turn the vise around so you can see what I'm talking about, how close you want them together. Otherwise they'll get way too far apart. You see that? You'll see, you see how they come together here in just a bit. It's the only way you're going to get them to come out just right. Now it's time to put on the rib material. What's going to bulletproof the body is I'm going to rib it twice uh, from two directions. That way it's going to be anchored twice. The counter wrapped twice is, is, is what it boils down to. So it should really, you know, strengthen the peacock quite a bit. I'll uh, hook that on the bottom of the shank there and because it's going to be counter wrapped um, in the traditional counter wrap way method now it's time for the peacock <clears throat> and you notice my threads at the front of the hook that's because i'm going to tie it in by the tip and at the front of the hook well i've got a whole fistful of these things here and i don't want all of them i just got a few extras just in case that things went to heck on me but I'll set several aside, take the waist ends here, and I'll just trim them off so they don't hang up on stuff. And tie them on right here at the front. And just bind them to the hook as I go towards the back. <clears throat> Now I'll take it just a little bit further back. Now, there we go. Now I'm just going to start wrapping. And I see a lot of people twist this up and try to try to try to rope it up. Well, if you'll grab it and hold it, let's see if I can. And I'll just grab if you grab all those fibers and hold them just like I am right now. If I never move my hand every time I come around the hook, I'm putting a twist in those. And because my thread's not there in the way, in fact, it's getting so tight, I'm gonna to have to relax them or break them. And I want you to notice that I'm tying it on by the tip, wrapping to the back, so it's the same as if I had tied them on by the base end at the back. Now that's, there's the body. Now I'm going to rib, counter rib forward through the application I just put on there with the thread, and I'm not going to worry about five turns and all that stuff. I'm strengthening this, so I want to get seven and six or seven turns in there. All I'm doing is strengthening that peacock. Now comes the rib that everybody sees, and it'll be counter wrapped in the more traditional counter wrapped direction. <clears throat> now, now, now we have a decision to make, and, it, and it's up to you. And quite frankly, I do not know what the answer is to the question that I'm gonna to pose to you. Which, which is the proper way? Do you fold the wing now and put on the hackle? Or do you put on the hackle and fold the wing? I don't know because I've seen it commercially available both ways. And you know what? Of all the people I've run across in, in my many years on this earth, I never met Doug Prince. I never, never had the pleasure never had the pleasure of seeing one of the patterns that he tied. So I am going to fold it over after I've wrapped a hackle. Whether that's the right way or the wrong way, I don't know, but that's the one we're going to use. And for right now, remember I said that we're going to be using feathers that have got really great dry fly stuff. See this really great dry fly stuff that we have here? But what we have here right at the base end is a bunch of webby stuff that I'll get about two or three turns 
You can see I've got quite a bit of web here before I get into the spikier dry fly stuff out of the tips. Well, that'll make a pretty nice collar. Quickly reach into the bin and get my hackle that I dropped into the bin out of the out of there too, just in case I need it. You never know. I mean, this is live, you know, it, things can go to heck. Now I'm going to go ahead and tie that on with a crisscross wrap, make a couple of turns to the back behind it, and then come in front. You see how that kicks that, that stem back? Put a 90 in that stem. Of course, it's never going to show because I'm going to turn this into a, a hackle collar. And I'll just wrap a couple of turns, stroke everything back, do another. Okay, now it's time to fold over the wings. I'll show you a trick there. You take your thumbnail and you get right down there between the bead and tighten, tighten those wings up right there. There we go. And now I'll start building my thread. I don't know what you'd call it, collar, base, head, whatever it is, it, it's the finish, it, I'll finish the fly off right there behind the bead. And I have to build up a little bit of thread to work my way up to a position where you can see it. And I also need to take it a little bit back over these wings. I want them to stick up, but not too terrible much. I'm gonna use the crotch of my scissors just to break that, that feather. And there we go. <clears throat> All right, I can start, see it. There we go. Now there's a, it's, I don't want that to be any higher than that. I could, cause I still want it to, yeah, it's got some good play to it. Got that, I, I snagged a hackle, but I decided to get rid of it before I had to try to trim it with my scissors. There we go. Now I'll use the crotch of my scissors to break the thread. Set that aside for the moment. And let's see what we got here. And I'll tell you right now, that guy is bulletproof or it's as bulletproof as you're ever gonna get a Prince Nymph to be. Anyway, right now what I'm looking at is the fibers on a, on a big um, on, on a big partridge feather. I want you to look really carefully at these fibers because right about here, the fibers go from being soft to actually kind of spiky. And if you're tying sizes 16, 18s and 20s, this stuff right here is tailing material. Now I'm gonna be tying a 12 tonight. So that means that I am gonna to have to get back into this softer stuff, right about where my pointer is, is, is about where the, it's gonna be on the end of the shank. And so I have a section from here, excuse me, a section from here to here that's going to be weak and I'm gonna to have to strengthen that. And that's where the shroud comes in. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we get into it. But right now, just so you can see, it's a, let me see if I can, if I could zoom in just a little bit there, that would, let me, okay, I think you can get a better, see that this is some pretty spiky stuff right out here on the end, as compared to the stuff that as it goes back towards the stem, it gets to be a lot more webby, and of course, the webbier it gets, the more flexible it is, it's not, not nearly as much uh, spike to it. But anyway, that's what I'm gonna use for the tail material right there. Let me just take this out. <clears throat> there we go. That's a, it's just strictly a post wing. There's the tail and the shroud. You can't see it. We'll point it out when we get, when we get into it. But the shroud is actually extending from here to here. And what I'm gonna do this time now on this fly, it's a post wing. I'll just pull the thread out from under the anchor that keeps it from coming un, unthreaded. And I'm going to start my thread at the point where I want to tie on my wing. It's just kind of a marker point. 
that I never put thread under a hackle fiber tail, except when it's it's a soft hackle fiber tail, because it's only the hard fibers that I want to uh, want to control without against the bare hook. Now I'm going to pull these fibers out, tear them away, measure them for length, set them into place, and start tying them on on the hook. They're going to flare. Even even feathers can flare. Not bad, but they're going to flare a little. Still not too bad. Now what I want to do is uh, I'm zoomed in too close here. We want to get back out to there for the rest of the tying operation. I'll zoom in if we need to. All right, now move forward to the wing area. All right, and I just I took a couple of these body feathers like this, and that's what I'm going to turn into wings. Only I've already taken the time to put them so they oppose each other and just get out onto the tip of the wing itself. Going to measure them for length, equal to the length of the hook shank. I'm going to reach in from the off side, lay my scissors flat along the shank and make a trim. There's a little bit more bulk in my wings than there is in the tail. And that severe angle on the cut gives me a nice blend between the tail material and the wing material. I'll wrap a thread dam in front of those wings. Yep, crisscrossing between the between them for right now. I made a mistake there. Let me back off and there we go. That's and I'll trim that one off underneath. And now it comes time for the hackle. And I'll tie it on at the front, crisscross so that it's pointing in the direction that I want it to go. And then I'm going to wrap so that it's hanging just behind the wings so that I can get a couple of turns of hackle uh, behind those wings. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pull the wings back out of my way and wrap several turns of hackle, each one getting further back on the hook from the previous. Now I'm going to make a couple of turns of hackle behind. I'll make about three, just like I would on a normal dry fly. And now I'm going to tie this off on top of the hook. And I'm just going to keep wrapping towards the back, just like I did on the wet flies. Until I get to a point where I have enough good hackle fiber from this stem right here that I'm tapping with my scissors to support the weak part of the tail. Now let's see if that's going to be long. You see when I bend that like that, you can see about how long those fibers are going to come down and shroud the, the weak part of the tail. And that looks to me like just about right. I'm going to take a couple more turns. There we go. Now I'll snap it off and just continue wrapping because I still have fibers there. Strengthening that, that tail. Now I'm going to take a turn under that tail to tip it up just a little bit. And now it's time for the dubbing. <clears throat> that is so backwards. What's the matter with it? Nothing, it's oh. just so backwards. It's oh. just, you know, you here you've got this beautiful hackle on there already and now you're putting on the body. All right, tell uh We'll just uh, touch a little bit of that dubbing on there. We don't need a lot because as you can see, there's not a lot of area to cover there. That's the Touchatron with Amtron, isn't it? Yeah, Touchatron with Amtron. I really like it. It's starting to become my favorite of what we make. Yeah, it's, it's my favorite too. That's why I always reach for it. Okay, and we're just working our way to the back of the hook. And I'm gonna run out of dubbing right at the back so I can rib forward with my thread. Now I'm going to wiggle wrap through the hackle on my journey to the front of the hook. Keep wiggle wrapping. One of the things about this, when you go to finish the head, you don't have any stem there to screw you up and make a, a big ugly head when you hadn't planned on it. You can get just some beautiful, beautiful small heads this way. And, People will wonder, now how the heck do you do that? Well, 
That's one way to do it. Tip it so they can see those divided wings. You really can't see them. Yeah, I, let me let me finish uh, nipping a couple of things off here. <clears throat> There's your divided wings. You can make the wings out of anything. If you wanted to use duck quill, you could. You could use hair if you wanted to. But I just wanted to have give you the challenge of recognizing that you can take some non-traditional materials and turn them into a job that they weren't designed for by strengthening the weak parts. And that's just what we did tonight. 